the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 11, verses 25 onwards. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to your Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Could we all raise our hands and say hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In the Bible, we read about one of the greatest conflicts one of the most famous conflicts in the book of prophet Samuel. This happens in 1 Samuel chapter 17. When we read about David and Goliath, the Bible speaks to us about a young boy called David. Mind you, David was not a man. David was a boy. He was a boy who used to do a little bit of errands for his brothers. And that is why it would be said in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 14. David was the youngest. The three eldest were at war. And David would go to Saul and to his brothers taking them food. That was the job of David. He would just go taking food and he would be very excited when he reached that place of war because he could see the army standing there in fear. And that is when one fine day taking meals for his brothers, he stands there and he hears, he hears something that is spoken amongst the army about King Saul having made a declaration and saying, that anyone who defeats Goliath will be given riches and along with riches they will be given the hand of his daughter in marriage. They will be given the hand of his daughter in marriage though David was a little boy yet the moment girl in marriage came forth at that time David was stirred. And that's what every boy does, irrespective of age. Once there is a girl involved in it, that is when their heart starts getting stirred. And here David, though being a little boy, he looked at the men who made that statement and he asked them once again, what is the promise? And he said, the promise is you will be given riches and you will be given the king's daughter in marriage. And that is when David looks and makes a big statement and he says in verse 26 he looks and he says what shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God at that moment he looks and he makes that big statement and he says who is this man that he defies the armies of the God of Israel. And the moment the people hear it, they go and tell King Saul about a man who is ready for the battle. Mind you, he's not a man, he's only a boy. 
And that is when King Saul is excited. He's got one person to fight this battle. Here David is looking. His heart has been stirred up because of that statement of that wife that he will get. Though he's a little boy, still his heart is stirred up because of that. And at that moment, his brothers look at him and tell him, what work do you have over here? Go back home. And still the Bible says, even though his brothers tell him that, still he goes and asks the people, what was that promise once again? What was that promise once again? And they repeat that promise nearly three times in that chapter. And his heart is stirred up. And he looks and he says, there is nothing about Goliath. I will stand against him. And the Bible says, King Saul calls David in. And when David comes to Saul, David tells him, I will stand against Goliath. And at that moment, David is very taken up. Saul says, you are still a little boy. You're still a little boy. And David says, fear not. For when I take care of my sheep, I have killed the lions and I've ripped open the mouth of the bears. And therefore, I'm not scared. At that moment, the Bible says, Saul clothed David with his own armor. He put a bronze helmet on David and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over his armor and then he tried to walk. Mind you, David was only a boy. He had a bronze helmet on his head. He had a coat of mail on his body. He had a big sword on him and he tried to walk. And the Bible says he couldn't take two steps forward. And he took all that out. And then he takes a sling in his hand and he takes five round stones. He puts it into his pocket and he goes out in war against Goliath. And he stands in front of Goliath. Goliath looks at this little boy, David, and he looks at him with disdain, says the word. He looks at him with disdain and he tells him, am I a dog that you have come to me with sticks in your hand? And, and David silently took the stone into his sling and he shot that stone right into the center of the head of Goliath. And Goliath falls there dead. Dear brothers and sisters, in this whole incident, you have a giant standing there with all his armor, with all his power, with all his strength. And you have a little boy who looks and says, who is this Philistine that he stands against the army of God? When David makes that statement, either David is very cockish and very sheepish or either David has a brashness of youth or David has faith in God. And that is why the Bible would say, when David stands in front of Goliath, he says, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Praise the Lord. I come to you not with a sword. I come to you not with a bronze helmet. I come to you not with a great coat of mail. I come to you in the name of God and through the power of God. And that is how David stood in front of a giant called Goliath. David had a situation in front of him. He had a giant situation in front of him. He didn't fight that giant situation with what Saul gave him. Saul gave him a helmet of bronze. Saul gave him a coat of mail. Those were all things that were worldly. Saul tried to cover David with a lot of worldly protections. And that is when David took away the protections of the world and he held on to the protection of God. And that is how he comes in front of his giant. And he stands there and he says, I don't come to you with a sword in my hand. 
I don't come to you with a bronze helmet to protect me. I don't come to you with a coat of mail to protect me. I don't come to you with worldly protection. I come to you with faith in the power of God. Dear brothers and sisters, David fought his giant through the power of God, not through the power of the world. He had a situation in front of him. But David fought that situation in the name of Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, each one of us sitting over here has giants that we face in life. Each one of us sitting over here, we might like it, we might agree to it or no. But the fact remains, each one of us is fighting a giant that we are struggling to overcome. Maybe it could be within your own families. Maybe as parents you have a difficult giant of a problem that's connected with your children. Maybe as a husband and a wife, you have the giants of problems in your marital relationships. Maybe as a son or a daughter, you have a giant of a problem that you're having with your parents. Maybe as a family, you are struggling with situations connected with your finance, the giants of your finance. Maybe you are physically sick and you're struggling with the giants of your physical ailment. And maybe when you look at the giants that you are facing, at times it's tough to believe that you will be able to overcome it. Maybe time and again the world has tried to give you the support or maybe we've held support of the world to face our giants. Maybe we've tried the world time and again to get an answer or a solution for the problems connected with our giants. Today, as you sit in the presence of God, do what David did. Throw away the material support that the world has been giving you. Put away that bronze helmet that you've held from the world. Put away that cloak of mail that you've been holding on to, thinking that that will protect you. And stand as David stood in front of Goliath. Stand as David stood in front of his giant. He stood there not in the name of the world. He stood there not with the power of the world. He stood there with the power of his God. Dear brothers and sisters, if today Jesus has brought you here, you facing your giants of your life, it could be in your field of education. It could be in your field of your relationships. It could be your problems connected with your finance or your family relationships. All those giants that you face in life, you stand in front of your giants, not in the name of the things or the support that the world has given you, not with your intellectual capabilities. Don't stand here with your family traditions. Don't stand here with the power of your wealth. You stand here in the name of Jesus and God will fight that battle for you. You could have your giants. And maybe these giants are looking down at you with disdain. Just as Goliath looked at David with disdain. That's what the word describes it. Goliath looked at David with disdain. Time and again when we have our problems. Time and again when we have our brokenness. Time and again when we have our situations of anxiety in front of us. We feel that the world looks at us with disdain. The world is making fun of our situations. The world is making fun of our lives. Even David saw Goliath look at him with disdain. But there was nothing that he had to fear. He could stand there in the presence of God, in the power of God, and look at his giant eye to eye without any fear. Dear brothers and sisters, you and I will be able to look at our giants eye to eye without any fear. Because God will not allow us to be defeated. Maybe some of us have got ourselves into this situation. Maybe we are facing our giants because we have got ourselves into this situation. Maybe it's because of our own carelessness. Maybe it's because of our own brashness. 
that is why david got into this situation david forced himself into that situation when he made that statement and he said who is this philistine i can take him i can put him down david knew or david had that brashness when he made that statement he put himself into that situation dear friends maybe some of us seated over here have put ourselves into a tough situation maybe our carelessness maybe our brashness maybe our faults and our mistakes we put ourselves into situations where we face our giants but even if you've placed yourself into your into these situations because of your own faults and your own problems and your own mistakes mind you god will not let you get defeated even though it can be our faults god will not let you get defeated maybe there are certain situations that you are facing today and you're not responsible for it still god will stand by you whatever giants you have in front of you know one thing in your heart god will never allow you to be defeated if today he has brought you here he will never allow you to be defeated in the bible we read all through the gospels in the life of jesus so many people who were on the verge of defeat so many people who thought that their lives were already defeated they came to jesus they were the paralyzed they were the blind they were the sick the lame they were the outcast the tax collectors all these people were people who were facing the giants of their life they were people who were on the verge of defeat the world had totally defeated them sidelined them there was a lady with hemorrhage who was sidelined by the world she spent all her money on doctors she couldn't get healed she was nearly defeated there was a blind man bartimius people called him a blind beggar he was defeated in life there was the crippled there was the lame there was the man who was paralyzed by the pool of bethsada these were all people who were defeated they were facing giants of their life there were the prostitutes there were the tax collectors who were not accepted by society they were facing the giants of their life when they were facing defeat and when they were facing the giants of their life they came into the presence of the lord dear brothers and sisters not one of them went back defeated when they came into the presence of jesus all of them walked back with a healing the one who was paralyzed and facing defeat walked back home the one who was blind and who had to be led to jesus walked back all by himself the lady with hemorrhage who was considered unclean walked back as a clean person the lepers who were sidelined by society walked back in a healing for their leprosy none of them who came to jesus was defeated and no one who comes into the presence of the lord will be defeated you could be going through situations in life today today maybe your family is on the verge of a defeat Maybe you look at your marriage and you think that it is defeated. Maybe a husband is separated from his wife. Maybe your wife is separated from a husband. Maybe you're facing defeat, you're facing a situation of divorce, but no one thing in your heart God will never allow you to be defeated. You could be having children who have gone astray. today maybe there are parents over here who are worried about their children having gone into problems of addictions maybe they don't listen to you anymore maybe they don't believe anymore maybe they don't come to church anymore you're anxious in your heart about their future you can see them drinking their life away you can see them getting into problems of addictions of drugs and gambling maybe you're looking at defeat you're staring at defeat connected with your children but know in the depths of your heart god will never allow your family to be defeated it 
It's a promise of God. The moment God created you, He made a covenant with you. A covenant of faithfulness. Dear friends, know one thing. Maybe you and I have got ourselves into these situations of brokenness. Maybe because of our own faults. Maybe we have broken our covenant with God. But even if you and I break our covenant with God, God will never break His covenant with us. We could have rejected God. We could have moved away from God. But God will never break His covenant with us. The Lord made a promise when He said in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 16, I've carved you on the palm of my hand. I will not forget you. I will not let you get defeated. You could be a David in your life. You could feel like only a boy, weak, not strong enough. Maybe when you see your families breaking, when you see your situations being too tough, you feel that defeat is very close. But know in your heart, God will not allow you to be defeated. And the glory of God will be seen through your lives. The glory of God will be revealed through your lives. The Bible tells us about a man who was blind and sitting by the wayside. The Bible says, when the disciples saw the blind man, they asked Jesus, why is he blind? Is he blind because of his parents' sin? Or is he blind because of his sins? The Lord looked at them and said, he's not blind because of his parents' sin. He is not blind because of his sins. He's blind because the glory of God is to be revealed. Today maybe you and I are going through situations when we look and we ask ourselves, why am I suffering? Why am I going through brokenness? Why is my family going through brokenness? Is it because of my parents' sin? Is it because of my sins? Is it because of my faults? The Lord assures you tonight, it is not because of anyone's sin, nor is it because of your sin, but it is because the glory of God will be revealed. Hallelujah. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, each one of us seated over here, each one of us seated over here will have a testimony to give. Just like that young boy looked at me or that young boy wrote to me with that statement, you will have a testimony to give everyone that God will not allow me or my family to be defeated. You have come into the presence of God, not by your own will. You have been brought here. You have been brought here by a God who cares enough. A God who knows that there is areas of brokenness. A God who knows that maybe you're not able to handle the giants of your life. He's brought you here to give victory. You will not lose this battle. Just as Israel never lost their battles. Israel was a weak nation. Israel was always a weak nation. All through the Bible we read, Israel was a weak nation. There was only one thing they had as strength. And that was the presence of God. He never abandoned them. How many times Israel abandoned God? How many times Israel spoke against God? How many times Israel rejected God? But God didn't break his covenant with them. He was faithful to them. You could have rejected God all your lives. But God will not reject you. His covenant with you is always intact. In the Bible we read, When Israel cried in their slavery, God took them out of Egypt. They would never have been allowed by the Pharaoh out of Egypt. But God pulled them out of Egypt. And God took them through the desert. And the Bible says, when they were making that journey in the desert, they came in front of the Red Sea. When they stood in front of the Red Sea, they had no escape. 
the Red Sea in front of them, the Egyptian army behind them. They felt tormented, they felt defeat, they faced defeat. And that is when Moses looks at them and gives a beautiful promise in Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 he says, Do not be afraid, stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. Praise the Lord. Do not be afraid, stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. And then he looks at them and he says, the Lord will fight for you and you only have to remain still. The Lord will fight for you, you only have to remain still. Dear brothers and sisters, maybe you have a Red Sea in front of you, a Goliath in front of you, something too big for you to overcome. The Lord gives you a promise. Do not be afraid. Stand firm. See the deliverance the Lord will accomplish for you and for your families. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you believe that Lord, the Lord will not allow you to get defeated? Can you raise your hands? Praise the Lord. How many of you are facing giants in life? Can you raise your hands? Praise the Lord. Let's accept the fact we all have giants. And how many of you believe that the Lord will raise you, a little David, will raise you up over your giants, not only you but your families? How many of you believe that? Raise your hands. Praise the Lord then smile. Then smile in the presence of God because the victory will be yours. Believe now itself that you have won that victory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, we are at the Holy Eucharist. This is a place where we offer our giants. We don't need swords in our hands. We don't need anything in our hands. You know the Bible tells us David put into his pocket how many stones? He put five stones. How many did he use? Just one. Dear brothers and sisters, that one slingshot hit right on target. Why do you think that slingshot hit on target? Was it because David was very good at throwing the sling? No, if David was so good, he wouldn't put five in his pocket. The five were spare bullets. He placed those spare bullets in his pocket because his shot wasn't so good. But when he took the name of God and he looked at Goliath and said, I come to you not with sword, but I come to you in the name of God. At that moment, who shot that sling for David? God did it for him. He will shoot the sling for you. And your giants will fall in that one shot. Have that faith in the power of God. Have that faith in the power of God. We are in the Eucharist. There's no better place to place our giants. Put them there at the foot of the cross. And leave them there. And let the Lord pound on them during this Eucharist. And let him crush them under his feet. For Satan can never get hold of the children of God. Because a covenant has been made with you and me. A covenant in which God said, I will be with you till the end of times. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.